Hi class, welcome to lesson 50. In this class, we will describe how the laboratory procedure titration is used to characterize acids and bases. Make sure you are taking notes as you follow along with a calculator and a reference table. Write down any questions you have and we'll discuss them in class. Let's go. So the problem we begin with is that most solutions are colorless. So it's difficult to determine which solution is safe to drink, which one will burn, and which one will dissolve your throat away. So as a review, we could use pH indicators to help distinguish between these solutions. When using pH indicators, we will use reference table M to determine the color the indicator will turn in various pHs. Of course, we remember that acids have pHs between 0 and 7, and bases have pHs from 7 to 14. The only perfectly neutral pH is a pH of exactly 7. As you will recall from Lesson 49, on Reference Table M, we are given the pH range where the indicator is changing colors. So for methyl orange, the range is 3.2 to 4.4. The indicator is not very useful when it is changing colors, but it is very useful at pHs before and after the range. So if we add these numbers to our reference table, we'll see that a pH from 0 to 3.2, methyl orange will be the color to the left or red, and a pH of 4.4 to 14, methyl orange will be the color to the right, or yellow. This is true for all the indicators. It is going to show the color to the left when the pH is between zero and the first number, and the color to the right when the pH is between the second number and 14. So here you can see that bromothymol blue is going to be yellow at a pH of zero to six, and blue at a pH of 7.6 and higher. If we continue to apply this trend, we can see that phenolphthalein is going to be colorless at a pH of 0 to 8, and it will be pink at a pH of 9 to 14. And we can just continue to apply this trend to the other indicators. Now notice that not every indicator is good at distinguishing the difference between an acidic solution and a basic solution, but instead, Indicators are great at determining how acidic a substance is or how basic. For instance, acids with a pH of 5 would be yellow in methyl orange, but so are bases. So we know that if we use two or more indicators, we can better isolate the exact color and the exact pH of a substance. For instance, if a substance turns Leibniz red, we know its pH is going to be 4.5 or less, making it an acid. Now, if it also turns methyl red, we know that it is actually a relatively strong acid versus a substance that turns red in Leibniz and yellow in methyl orange will be a weak acid because its pH will be closer to 7. The laboratory procedure called titration is a controlled neutralization reaction. Acid-base neutralization reactions are double replacement reactions where the outsides, hydrogen and hydroxide, form water, and the inside, metal and nonmetal, form an ionic compound also known as salt. So now let's look at another acid-base neutralization. Remember, acids typically begin with hydrogen and bases typically end with hydroxide. Pause the video and see if you can predict the products of this reaction. Did you get potassium chloride in water? So titration is a laboratory technique used where you mix a solution of known concentration or molarity 
with a solution of unknown concentration to determine its molarity. Typically, the solution with known concentration is put in the long skinny tube called a burette, and that is used to measure the amount needed to neutralize the solution of unknown concentration. Every time you do a titration, it is important that you use an indicator so that you know when you've reached a point of neutralization. If you don't use an indicator, you're simply mixing two colorless solutions and forming a new colorless solution of salt water. You can see from the series of images here what a titration looks like. Again, the burette and the flask below are filled with different substances. One is an acid and the other is a base. But as an indicator is added to the flask at the bottom, it will change color once the pH is neutralized and you transition from an acid to a base. The equation for titration is found on reference table T. This equation is very similar to the equation we used for Boyle's law because pressure is how we represent the concentration of a gas, while molarity is how we represent the concentration of a solution. Let's see if we can do some practice calculations together. In this question, we are given 25 milliliters of a sample of nitric acid. And we see that it is neutralized. So neutralized is the key word that tells us that we are going to apply the titration formula from reference table T. Since I'm going to use the titration formula, I'm going to write down my formula. And I'm also going to write down a variable table so I can list the values of the variables that I know and that I'm looking for. Again, we have a 25 milliliter sample of nitric acid. So 25 milliliters is our volume of the acid. And it is neutralized by 32.1 milliliters of a 0 0.150 molar potassium hydroxide solution. So we can see that here we have the volume of the base And here we have the molarity of the base. So we're looking for the concentration or molarity of the acid. From here, we're going to substitute into our equation from table T. Once we substitute, we can use our calculator to help us solve this problem. So you can see that our calculator answer comes out to 0.19 to six. Now when I look at the values given in the question, each value has three significant digits. So the best answer is 0 0.193 molar nitric acid. Let's look at another example. Here we want to know how many milliliters of a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, which is a base, solution is required to neutralize, again we have that keyword that indicates we're going to use the titration formula, 20 milliliters of a 0.200 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So since I have the word neutralize, I'm going to set up my equation from reference table T for titration. And then from there, I'm going to set up my variable table And I'll read through the equation again to see to, if I can identify the variables. How many milliliters of a 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide? So this is the molarity of the base.
and then I have 20 milliliters of an acid. So that is the volume of the acid. For the volume unit here, you can use milliliters or liters as long as both volumes have the same unit. So I know that my base volume will be in milliliters because my acid volume is in milliliters. And I have the acid's molarity is 0 0.200. This means that I'm looking for the milliliters of base. Now I'm going to substitute into my formula. Again, we can use our calculator to solve. So here you can see that our calculator answer is 40. Now when I look at each of these values, they're given to three significant digits. So the best answer is 40.0 milliliters. Let's do one more question together. Here, we are looking for how many milliliters of a 2.5 molar hydrochloric acid solution, so this is an acid, is required to exactly neutralize. So the word neutralize is our keyword to use the titration formula from reference table T uh, uh, 1,500 milliliters of a 5 molar sodium hydroxide that's a base solution. So I'm going to set up my variable table. In rereading the question, I know that I have 2.5 molar acid. That's the molarity of the acid. I have uh, 1,500 milliliters of base, and I have 5.0 molar solution of base. So I'm looking for the milliliters of acid. So when I substitute into my equation, it should look like this. And then we simply put this into our calculators. My calculator gives me a value of 3,000. Now when I look back at the question, every number is written to two significant digits. So I should report my answer to two significant digits. So in scientific notation, it could be 3.0 times 10 to the third milliliters, or I can convert to liters. This accurately reflects the precision of the instruments used in lab. Here is one more question. Here we're looking for how many milliliters of a 0.200 molar sodium hydroxide, which is a base, are needed to neutralize. So that means we're going to titrate using the formula on reference table T. 100 milliliters of a 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So you should set up your variable table and see if you can identify the variables and solve. That's it for titration, folks. 
Make sure you've taken good notes and you bring all your questions to class. See you soon. This concludes lesson number 50, titration calculations. Make sure that you've taken good notes and you bring all your questions to class. See you soon.